Okay, in this painting session, we're gonna be doing Green Goblin from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, we're gonna be doing it in these classic colors of purple and green. Uh, slightly different uh, sculpt with the kind of torn shorts rather than the, uh, the kind of speedos. Um, but yeah, it should, it should come out well, hopefully. I've realized that there's some clear mold lines and joints uh, that I've not cleaned up. Uh, but we're just gonna go with it and see how it turns out. I'm sure it'd be fine to a tabletop standard, certainly, and bring out uh, the miniature with the pumpkins as well, which would be fun. Um, so I've chosen five colors, five contrast colors that I'm gonna be using for this paint job, and we'll see how they go. And we're gonna start with the green. So for the green skin of a green goblin, uh, warp lightning green, and contrast range, is a very bright green uh, used for Doc Ock and a few others. Uh, really nice green, vibrant green that you want for a Marvel character. I'm gonna start on the on the legs. Now this is quite an awkward figure to hold because of the, uh, the nature of the sculpt. I haven't got a big enough holder to hold it in either. And actually, um, I'm, I'm gonna go to a smaller brush there. I was using my size one. Um, I'm gonna go down to my size zero. I have a little bit more control. So, okay, just give that a little look. That's looking good. The paint's settling well on that leg. Okay, let's do the other leg. And again, um, not being too, being relatively liberal with the paint as per normal. Not absolutely smashing it on, but uh, putting a decent amount on. And again, the paint's sticking absolutely perfectly to this uh, Wraith Bone Primer Spray unlike the uh, Black Rose Wars miniatures, which has been real, a real problem for me. Um, and I've mentioned that in a couple of videos now. Oop, let's try and get the right angle here. And again, I'm after a tabletop standard, not a competition standard of paint job, Something done relatively quick and with a nice result, which I really like the contrast paints for. And again, you'll see all my painting videos, well, I say all of them, pretty much all of my painting videos are in real time to give you a real sense of how long it actually does take to paint these miniatures. And I can talk about them as I go through. So if like me, you have a huge backlog of painting to do, and um, you're not entering any competitions for painting, then I think you can't go too far wrong with Citadel Contrast Paints for your Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures. They give a nice vibrant tone, which is what you want for, in my opinion, for comic book characters. I'm just making sure I've got everything there because if you leave any out, it's going to be a bit of a problem when you come back over to it. Green Goblin, one of my favourite characters as well. Uh, certainly villains in the Marvel Universe. Uh, and this sculpt is amazing. And he's a re really fun to play in the game as well. I, I, I love Spider-Foes uh, at the moment. And I find... Um, yeah. He's, he's he's got I like I like their ability I like Green Goblin how different he is on his uh, injured side compared to his his starting side um, I think it's pretty cool and he's got so many shenanigans I especially like his uh, blowing up a 
piece of terrain when someone moves <laughs> close they have to really think about it when they're moving their characters all right let's go to their face and i'm just gonna redo the eyes so don't worry about that uh, when i come to that to do them yellow so I just want to get a good covering of the green before we get to that. Oops. Remember, Wraithbone base paint is your friend, your saving grace in uh, contrast paints. It's your rubber, as it were, in contrast painting. Another essential paint to, to make sure you have if you're painting like I am doing here. I'm just using my thumb to take away some of the paint uh, on the cloth that I've got on the cloth there. And there we go, there's the green done. And that'll brighten up a little bit as he dries. Which uh, is kind of what we want, right? Uh, I'm actually going to move to the smoke next. Uh, maybe. Uh, let me think. Uh, just while I wait for that green to dry, I want to get the uh, the trailing smoke done. Uh, that's coming behind the glider. So just looking on some art here, I'm thinking a bit yellow, a Yandan yellow, as well as some Agaros dunes. Whoops, some Agaros dunes. So I'm going to use these two colours. I'm also going to wet blend them effectively um, together. So I'm going to go to my bigger brush now, to my size one. Make sure I've got both open. That's double the chance of spilling, obviously, but uh, I'll try and be careful. And I'm just going to paste on the yellow to start with, all over uh, the smoke area. Less so at the base, I just want it mostly towards the top of this glider. Not being afraid to get on the glider actually because I'm going to be going over that with a metal anyway, with a lead belcher. Okay, and then I'm going to quickly clean that brush, get on the agaros and then literally just go kind of over it in a kind of splodgy effect. just take the, the paint off with my brush because I don't want to get too much of the yellow into the agaros obviously that would be good this will give it a kind of dirty look which is kind of what it's like just grab that pooling paint oops trying not to trying to be a little bit I don't mind too much if it goes over the base it's something I can touch up And then what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a bit of darker tones. Uh, so when I said five paints, it's probably going to be more, to be fair. Because I want that to be a bit more browner, actually. So I think what we'll do is we'll... Uh, I want it to be brown smoke, so I think we're going to go in with a brown. Uh, so let's use our snake bite leather. Because it still is a yellowy brown. So I'm going to put the lids on these so that they get tipped over. And let's get some snake bite brown and just do towards the uh, the kind of back of it. So a little bit on here, here. I'm just putting little dabs on, don't worry, I'm going to... Blend these a little bit in. And this is this is the fun part. You just play with this uh, contrast paint to get the desired look you want, and the paint will naturally go to the to the folds, right? Uh, which is kind of what you want with smoke. Okay, so we're going to let that. Just going to take away some of this pooling 
don't want too uh, too much paint in those crevices. Fine underneath. Okay. So there we go. There's the um, might go over that a little bit more with some of the browns um, when it's dry. Actually, uh, I'm just looking at some art, some comic art, and still a bit yellow that. So I might go in with a, a little bit of brown uh, to make that pop a little bit more. Especially down towards the bottom. So I like that. I like the top part where it's yellow going into this kind of deeper brown. And then I need a darker, darker brown coming towards that bottom part. I might even go in with a wild wood. Actually, so I'm starting to use more and more paints as I start to think about it. Uh, but, you know, that's just natural, I think, um, as you do this. Right, I think we're dry enough now to go into... The purples. So let's move on to the purples using Magos Purple, Magos Purple, which is from Contrast Range, of course, again. And this is a really nice pinky bright purple, which should tie in perfectly with the art. I'm hoping we will soon find out. Uh, so let's start with the hood. Uh, not being afraid to use a decent amount of paint on this. Now, you know, I'm going to be painting a fair amount of the miniature in this purple, by the way. Um, but I'm starting with the hat. Now, it is quite a quite a, a, a light purple, uh, so it will, not, it will not go over the green. So I may have to do a bit of touching up. Oh, and I've just painted over his ears, I've just realised. So that's going to have to change. That's fine. I can, I'll show you how to touch up by using, uh, because of that. Okay. So... As I've just started doing this, I've just realized, that's fine, uh, that we can carry on. Now, on the art, even the strap of his bag and everything is purple. So this is going to be a just a huge plump of this Magos purple all over. This green goblin miniature. As we go towards the top. And around the arms. <laughs> it's quite hard because I'm trying to dodge the, the uh, smoke that I've just painted. I don't want to get finger marks and stuff on that, so... Yeah, a holder would have been really beneficial, but I don't have one big enough, unfortunately, to use. Now, I might I might actually do something which I've not done before, which is use two coats, two coats, sorry, of a contrast. Because I just feel this is a bit too light as a paint. Just a bit too light. It's it's not it's not as dark and as vibrant as the uh, art is. Now, whether that will completely ruin the effect of the contrast paints, I'm not 100% sure. I guess we will find out once we get there. But I just feel it's a little bit too white in tone for this purple. So it looks almost like, like a pink rather than a purple. So yeah, so I think I'm definitely going to be going in with two coats of this and just, just see what it does. Hopefully it's fine.
Cool. Okay, so that's that's the purple at the moment. Yeah, and it's, it's very pink, isn't it? Uh, that's fine. We'll carry on. Let's get the boots done. It's the right. It's the right colour. It's just not vibrant enough. Not enough pigment in it. Uh, so obviously you can, don't worry about me getting it on the glider, that's going to be done with lead belcher, so that'll go straight over it. And I can't, I can't make it better pigment, <laughs> I can only thin it down. Uh, so I can't make it more brighter, so I think the only way to do that is do another coat. And we will see what happens. As I say, first time doing two coats of contrast. Okay, other boot. I'm absolutely loving, by the way, the um, Ultimate Marvel Graphic Novel Collection. Well, it's comic books, really, collection. Um, I finished Secret Wars the other day, and that's such a good series of comics. I think it was 12 issues uh, that fulfilled the whole storyline. Uh, but very, very cool. If you haven't managed to read that, I highly recommend it. Uh, Realise I've not done the trousers there. Just the whole section of his leg. So that was a bit of a do do. And now we need the gloves. Gloves are next. Yeah, I definitely feel that's a bit too light in tone. We'll see where, how it dries. It's always worth waiting for uh, the color to dry before you make any rash decisions. But I'm going to have to wait for that to do anyway before I go on a second coat anyway. So that's not an issue. It's funny because it, it, in the paint pot it looks it looks the perfect colour. But it just doesn't have quite the pigment uh, needed to, to pull off a really bright, vibrant colour. Being careful around that pumpkin because that's going to be a different colour. Again, I don't particularly want to have to reprime that area. Okay, that's one glove done. Next one. Let me see. I've painted the my lovely white. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, background. Uh, let's keep going with this. Nearly there. With this Migos purple or first coat, anyway. Does mean it's going to take a bit longer, but I think it's worth it. Um, I don't want him to be the pink goblin, really. It is definitely a purple. His uh, his outfit. There we go. And that is the first coat done. It's not it's not a million miles off to be completely honest. It's not that far off where we need to be. But I definitely think a second coat's needed. Okay. So from that to the pumpkins themselves, 
with uh, the Ayandan yellow and Griff Hound orange. I'm going to be doing uh, the smoke trail similar to that of the uh, glider to get a bit of consistency. And as you can see with the glider, now it's starting to dry. It's giving a really nice effect. I love that. That's, that's, that's coming out really well. And you've always got to wait for these paints to dry to, to really see the effect. So like on the top of the pumpkin here, it's going to be yellow. Uh, and then I'm just going to do all the smoke yellow as well. And the same on this one. So top face of it being yellow. And then the smoke being yellow. Like so. And then we go straight in with the orange. While it's still a bit wet to get a little bit of blending on the pumpkin itself. Griff hound orange onto the pumpkin itself. So just going over the bits that are white, first of all. And then once I've done the white parts of the pumpkin, I'm just going to take the paint off and then just feed that orange in to the sides a little bit. There we go. Inside the mouth a minute. Perfect. Uh, might as well start with doing this slight blending idea as i've not got much orange on the paint which is perfect like so and then get in there with the orange and do the rest of the pumpkin obviously pumpkins are quintessentially orange uh, but just to get a bit of that not fake highlight but forced highlight i suppose you can call it so let's make sure we've got I just need to get in to that part of the hand. It's looking good. Okay, so there's the pumpkins. And as with everything, once once the miniature starts to get painted up, it'll start it'll start to come together. It'll look better and better. Now the eyes will look very dark, so I'm going to be using I'm actually going to use a black templar inside the eyes itself uh, to give it a really black look inside the pumpkin eyes, just like the art on the uh, on the comics. And while we wait for everything else to dry, let's get on with the glider itself. So we're going to use our snake bite lead snake bite level. What am I talking about? Uh, we're going to use my lead belcher. Mm -mm -mm. If I can find my lead belcher, there it is. Going to use lead belcher. Is that my new one? No. Ah, that's why. There it is. Bring in my palette. Which is a disgrace, I know. Uh, and chuck on, you know, you need a fair amount of that to cover that entire glider. A bit of water to thin it down. And we're ready to crack on. So I'm going to start with the underside, literally the whole thing. And I'll just do a, a whole coat of this metal. The other side up here. Is that sticking? You might need a bit more neat paint on that. Don't think much primer managed to get to the underside of of this wing, which is fine because we can just, uh, just just pick up a bit more neater quantity of the um, the paint. There you go. I think I just went over the flame there. I'm just going to make sure that's not the case. I don't want to go over the uh, the trailing smoke. Uh, 
careful. Perhaps got a bit too much water on that. Yeah, we need a bit more, less water and a bit more paint on these. It's um, that's very wet. So let's get in some kitchen doers. Yeah, that was way too much uh, water on that on that little bit there. Okay, and just keep um, getting a good base coat of this lead belcher onto the glider. I've used way too much water on my feel. So you shouldn't thin it down that much, just thin it down a little bit. As we go, Okay, we're getting there. A little bit more paint. Now, if you can be bothered uh, and you've got the skill to do non-metallic metals, I think non-metallic metals work really well with uh, comic book characters. Um, so if you've got the skill to do that, I've seen some fantastic, obviously we've seen some fantastic paint uh, painted miniatures using that non-metallic metal. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to go over this with uh, with contrast paints, as I always have done, um, because I find that it gives a good result and it doesn't take too long. Okay, and that is the glider now done. So we can put that away. Clean the brush. And again, 30 minutes in, and we've got the base colors on. Yes, that purple, oh, it's so close, that purple. So close to being good. Ah, oh, do I? 
Will it ruin it? Oh, that's... Mm. I worry that that might ruin it. If it's um, if a second coat's put on it, and that's my worry now. It's so so close, but it's not it's not quite there, is it? Oh man, that is very close. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go second coat. Let's see what happens. Let's do that now. So back with the Magos purple. Let's see if this is a disaster. I'm gonna start with the hand, the arm. Let's see what happens. Now this will. This will really help me uh, with future painting because if it doesn't, if it's not horrendous, then uh, this might be something I do quite often to get a, a better pigment of colour. So I can use those lighter colours and just do a second coat. And okay, that's. Now, paint it on, everywhere. So now we're gonna see, first glance, it looks good. First glance, it looks really good. Yep, let's just go for it. <laughs> that's, that's all the evidence I needed. Um, it just had to look, it just had to have a contrast look to it. Um, now, this is fine if you're doing the whole area. As long as you're re going over on the second coat with the whole area, that's fine. What you can't do is just do like one little part of that area because that will be obvious which bit you've, you've, you've gone over again. There we go. Yeah, it's looking good. That'll be fine. Good, good, good. Again on the head piece again. I've just gonna I'm going over I'm going over everything, the ears and everything. I'll sort that out in a minute. Um, because it would just be easier to get an even coat by doing it all together. Okay, and now the main bit. So just <laughs> literally plastering it on. <laughs> Um, let the paint do all the work, getting into all those crevices, getting all of that contrast up, just making sure we haven't got loads of paint pooling anywhere, because that looks stupid, of course. And just uh, carrying on with this. Uh, looks like that needs a bit more paint in there. Okay, that's cool. And then inside, oops, Ooh, I was being a little bit careful there. That was a little bit careless. I don't want it to go all over the green, of course. That would be a, a bit silly. I've done all this work. Like so, and Shorts. Yeah, I mean, that, that's already looking really good. That's already looking more like the colour we want. Now I am being a little bit more careful with the uh, the metal. I don't want to uh, paint purple over the metal. And look at look at the sculpt on this as well. The detail on the folds of these boots and stuff. Absolutely brilliant. I need to get in there a minute. As best I possibly can. There we go. 
another boot. Back of the boot. Uh, don't don't forget the feet, the toes, they're coming out of the uh, stirrups. That's looking much better. That was a definitely the right choice. So yes, you can. The answer is yes, you can. I think as long as it's light enough in terms of light enough color um, contrast paint, then you can do more than one coat. I would say with the dark, like if I went over the green with a second coat, that would look terrible. Uh, that's too dark a tone uh, to do that. But light tones, yeah, it seems to work fine. So I'm happy with that. That's much more like the colour we see on the art. Okay, so he's starting to come along now. Should we go? I'm going to readjust, just one second, I'm going to readjust... The camera, the light, sorry, not the camera. Readjust the light a minute. So it is definitely coming along. Okay, with that done, I think the next job is to sort this smoke out. So like I said, I want a, a more of a brown as we go down. So let's get that snake bite leather back. Let's let's see if we can uh, get more brown. So I'm just gonna kind of stipple it a little bit on the um, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do in a second. So stippling it around, certainly around the bottom more than anything of this of this cloud of smoke. Just tiny bit up, up here, like so. Might be a bit too much down there. I've ruined that a bit. That's all right. It's not too bad. Just getting that, you know, a decent covering of this brown at the bottom. Okay, that's better. Now I know it doesn't look right at the moment, uh, but wait for that to dry. And I think that will give a really good effect. Well, I hope so. Uh, you want it a bit more smoky looking. And you know, it's the same with anything. The more the more you put into it, you can do layering on all your paint jobs, of course, and that will uh, give you the best possible effect. But that can take a long time to get good. I'm trying to think, how can I do this where it doesn't take me ages and ages and ages? And I think that's, when it dries, that'll look fine. That'll look good. Okay, pumpkins, uh, they just need the black doing onto them. I, I'm quite happy to leave them with their uh, with the yellow coming out the top. That's cool, it looks like they're set alight. So that's that's all really good. Um, right, I think we'll go on to the face next. As that's the bit that's not wet paint. And we're going to our detail brush for this. And you need your wraith bone base. So back with the palette. Oops. Right, now this is where <laughs> uh, eyes are needed. Oh, 
Oop, that's gone up a bit. Mm, I think that's better actually. <laughs> I've just done that. Uh, can I do a little bit more on those? Yeah, I think I try and get a bit more in the corner there. Oops, that's gone. No, I think that's good. Let's have a little look at the light. Yeah, that's good. We're we'll fine. Uh, we also need the teeth. Uh, teeth are bright white. And just doing this bit really shows off the uh the actual miniature and the sculpt it's getting the um There we go. <laughs> that just really helps. Even though a white, bright white uh, is really going to help. Teeth will probably stay that white, to be honest. <laughs> I might I might put a bit of null oil down there. Uh, but I think I want, I want that big contrast of white on the teeth. Yeah, I might go a bit of null oil. And that, also that will darken the inside of the mouth as well so that's probably a worth doing so yeah another paint added to the collection um nice glider i've got a choice i think i think i am going to use basilicum gray uh just to give it a dull sheen it's, it's way too bright and uh, i want it to be a lot duller for that um so we're going to go in with basilicum gray onto the glider i think we'll do that now So, Basilicum Grey is next contrast paint to use. I'll say for the uh, for the glider itself. So grab my size zero again. Uh, this pot doesn't stay open either. <laughs> so just the way it is. Uh, I'm just going to go through uh, everything apart from the uh, the little booster jets on the bottom. I'm going to get some yellow onto that uh, to show that, that that's actually. Uh, got some power as well. Look, it'll probably look kind of gold to be honest, um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, now uh, let's do the front. And we can kind of, uh, I'm gonna leave the eyes and do them with a, a kind of blue, uh, just to show that they're shining. Um, that should be pretty cool, a bit different. Just trying to follow the art. I know it's, it's, it's supposed to be a metal shine, but just take it, I've got a bit too much paint on that bit. Ultimately, you don't want that to be too dull. Okay, and then we're ready to do the top. Start with the engine, the rocket booster. And we'll do the top of the glider, the, the wings. Just get in there. And we'll just 
Get some more onto there. Perfect. And now, just need to do the uh, the foot bars, I guess, like whatever they're called, stirrups. And finally, getting down the corner there, around these foot stirrups. Okay, and just into that corner, it seems a bit. Oh, that's fine. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so that's the uh, basilicum grey done on the metal. And we'll let that dry, it'll brighten up as we let it dry as well. Uh, let's now use the null oil. I think we're just should we just crack on with null oil? No, I really want it to be black inside the uh, inside the pumpkin eyes. So I'm gonna go and uh, mouth. So I'm gonna go in with black templar with my detail brush to really make them stand out. I gotta be really careful here. I don't want to obviously get the black on the pumpkin itself. And a rolling paintbrush doesn't help situation, <laughs> as I think I've just gone over a tiny bit. And then the whole tea. Like so. Actually, what you can do is just rub your finger over the top of it if you make a mistake. But that's now got black eyes, black mouth. Perfect. Good. That's the Black Templar. That was Black Templar, by the way. I don't know. I'm adding to the paint list more and more and more as I go through this. Uh, but ultimately, what we kind of want is uh, this null oil to give us some contrast and some shade into the mouth. So grabbing some of that onto my paintbrush and then literally just going over the mouth now, like so. Not being afraid to use two, you know, you need to use a fair amount for it to give a good effect. And that will just darken the inside of the mouth and just make it a little bit better. I might actually use a little bit of some on the eyes as well. I just gotta be careful because I need that I need those white eyes. To for the yellow to shine through. So maybe with just a tad bit. Yeah I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool. Now you can see that brown has dried. We've got this kind of smoke effect now. Okay, the purple seems to have dried and that's come out really nice. I'm really chuffed with that. That's good. The Green Goblin is nearly done. 
Uh, let's get the yellow to those eyes in a second. Um, just trying to think of other things I need to do. Obviously, I need to do the base, of course. Um, but I'm just leaving that to the end. Uh, that won't take too long. By the way, um, do I have them? Yep, uh, this is the base of uh, Sabretooth. Uh, so just Basilicum Grey, a bit of Lead Belcher, and then Basilicum Grey on that. Uh, the cans, uh, Lead Belcher, and then Red, Blood Angels Red, to make the kind of can. Um, and that's and then just black paint around the edge to give saber tooth the finish. So a similar effect will go on with this. Well, with basilicum and grey, a bit of metal, lead belcher onto these uh, rivets. Um, I'll probably use a bit of nong oil around uh, around this area to show a bit of blackening of the of the smoke that's caused. Uh, just to add to that. But yeah, let's get these yellow eyes in now. So I am in yellow, yet again. We just want a small brush. And just get yellow onto the eyes. There are a couple of, unfortunately there's a couple of bits. I'm just gonna try and touch them up. This is something you should never really do and you might see why. Uh, some of the green, uh, just not taken to the skin where I just missed it out, not realizing. Uh, but there are a few little tiny specks uh, that need, that I just want to sort out. The first one is on his bicep, on his left arm. And I'm just gonna do that. Now it doesn't matter that it's, it's you can see how it's, it's darkened it up, right? Now I can just use my finger to just dab it. But ultimately I don't wanna, just to make it a little less severe. There we go. And on the other arm, I think there's a tiny, tiny bit there. And then there's a couple of bits here. Now the good news is with these on his other arm is they're in the kind of muscle defining uh, like crevice. So if I can follow that crevice, like so, that should dry fine. There we go. Right, oh his ears. I completely forgot about his ears. Now I was just doing that green. So we do have something to do. We gotta get his ears done. So back to that, back to that, uh, what was I saying, uh, wraith bone. Does that mean it's, yeah, I think it's, let's give me some of my paintbrush. And we need to get these ears done. So let's pick out the ears. some more paint it's dried up <clears throat> I'm sorry if my hair is in the way I know it did it for the saber tooth video and uh, my hair got a bit of a uh, got a bit in the way um, but I'm trying to look <laughs> as close I need to see the uh, the miniature up close to be able to do this well okay so he's now got white ears obviously they're going to be going green uh, very shortly which i completely forgot about it's looking good that looks all fine i think i'm gonna yeah if you look there not done very well on the end of that so again just Mm. 
There we go. So it's just that that little part of his uh, hood which has gone green and should be purple. So we've got some green and purple to do. Um, and once they're done, try and do two black tiny dots for pupils. I'm gonna go to my insane brush for that. And then he's done. So in fact, while waiting for the white to do that, I think we'll go on to my insane, the psycho, let's call it the psycho. No, maybe not. Oh God, that's not been that's not been used for a while. Uh, looks like it should be fine. Uh, so get that black Templar back, and we're going to try two dots for the eyes with this. Now, if this, this goes wrong, obviously we've got a bit of an issue. Uh, so fingers crossed, uh, it won't go wrong. Okay, right, now my hair will probably get in the way as I really look at the detail for this. Enough paint. How's that? That eye's great. That eye's a little bit... Mm. It's the wrong shape, really. It's not really a dot. It's kind of, kind of gone as a... Let's try that again. That's pretty good. It's a bit sideways looking uh, rather than straight on. Um, but, you know, if you look at it from that side, it's going to look fine. If you look at it from that side, it'll look fine. There we go. Okay, it's not looking too bad. Okay, that was the, uh, the Psycho used. <laughs> um. Okay, what are we on next? We're next, we are got to do the purple and the green. So let's get the green, let's do ears first. I'll just use my detail brush just so that we don't make a mistake with this one. Okay, so now we've got some ears. I might need to put some paint into the, that's better. So now we've got the ears. And finally, we need to do that one tiny part of Magos as best as we can, not to, to be different from the rest of the, you know, it might, it might be the issue. Uh, so let's get down here and that looks good. That looks good. That's fine. That, that's not going to be much different. Okay. Right, now we've sorted the ears out. I think now we are finished with Green Goblin in one hour, pretty much bang on the money. Oh, and blue, 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 blue. Nearly forgot. Uh, let's go with Griff Charger Blue. Uh, grey, Griff Charger Grey, sorry. Um, uh, if I can find it. Griff Charger Grey, which is like a bluey light grey. Just do the eyes of the um, of the metal. So I'm just going to go in here with these two. I've put way too much paint in there. Like so. Just to give it a slight different tinge. Probably gonna be really hard to see until it dries, obviously. 
Okay, so that is Green Goblin done. Looking pretty awesome. Base to be done, of course. But he's ready to lead the spider foes into battle against Peter Park in particular. Obviously, he gets his bonuses against Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Nice. There we go. That was Green Goblin. So until next time, keep painting.